This one is also about trying to make our critic or our discriminators satisfy that Lipschitz continuity and try to control our discriminators and our critic. The video is online. I'm going to go through this really fast. What is the idea? You have your neural network. Let's say this is a simplified version of a, a convolution. Actually, any convolutional neural network, you can represent it this way as well. By concatenating the input window, you should be able to work with this formulation. And, I, and in the end of the day, uh, convolutions are just linear operation. And then you push them through nonlinearities from one layer to the next one. So let's work with this architecture. And you want to control the Lipschitz constant of this architecture. We know that neural networks are function compositions. And then the Lipschitz norm, I'm going to give you the definition of a composition of two functions, is just less than or equal to the Lipschitz norm of one function times the other one. And the other observation is that the Lipschitz norm of usual activation functions that we use like ReLU or leaky ReLU is actually one. Okay, perfect. Now this functional form, you can, it's a bunch of linear operations, the nonlinear one, linear operation, nonlinear ones. The nonlinear ones have a Lipschitz norm of one. You can get rid of them. And in the end of the day, you're gonna end up with the Lipschitz norm of these linear operations. Okay, perfect. And that's gonna correspond to the spectral norm of your weights, according to this definition. The Lipschitz norm of a function is the supremum value of the spectral norm of its gradient. The gradient of a linear function is just uh, the weight matrix. So that's what you're gonna put here. And then the weight matrix is not gonna be a function of H anymore. It's just gonna be constant all the time. And therefore we can look at the uh, spectral norm of a matrix. And A here corresponds to Ws here. Okay, so far so good. Now, if this uh, spectral norm is either less than one or bigger than one, then you're going to get into trouble controlling the Lipschitz norm of your discriminator or critic. How can you control it? Make sure that it, that it is always one. And then the multiplication of a bunch of ones is always one. And that's why you're going to divide by the Lipschitz norm of your weights. And you are basically taking your weights and dividing them by their norm. And this way, the spectral norm of this modified weight is going to end up being one. And then you're going to be fine here. Okay, so far so good. But this is all theory. How do you implement it in practice? There is a nice way to compute your spectral norms, and that's using power iteration method. You are going to introduce uh, one parameter or you can just call it one tensor. You initialize it randomly. So if you're doing your PyTorch, this could just be torch that rand n of a particular dimension. This is not gonna be differentiable. So this is not gonna require gradients. So you are not gonna be optimizing over this, but how do you actually update it from one iteration to the next iteration? You multiply it by your weights, normalize it, that's going to give you a V vector. You take V vector, multiply it by a matrix, divide it by the norm. That's going to give you the updated version of your U. That's how you're going to be updating this vector from one iteration to the other iteration. And in the end, your spectral norm is going to be U that you kept updating and V that you kept updating from one iteration to the other one, multiplied by W. And this is going to give you the number that you're going to normalize your weights by. Any questions about this? Why is this clear? Okay, perfect. The other contribution is using the hinge loss. And the hinge loss is perhaps going to correspond to another uh, distance between two distributions. And perhaps we don't have a name for it, but that's going to give you another distance between the real distribution and the generated distribution. And then you're minimizing some distance. And then spectral normalization is a very good technique to know about. Why is that? because one of the challenges that you're gonna face while uh, training your deep neural networks, especially GANs, is that you have a lot of hyperparameters to fine tune. Like what should be my learning rate? What should be betas in my Adam optimizer? How many steps of a discriminator should I take? And then we just saw that you need to have two different learning rates 
this is equivalent to that. This would be good if you have an architecture or a mechanism that is going to be less sensitive to the choices of your hyperparameters. And the spectral norm is actually doing that. Okay, perfect. 